Okay, let's look at nesting functions. Um, sometimes you have to do something a little bit more complicated. Um, so, for instance, let's see if I've got a copy of this here. We've got this question. All right, uh, I want to get the first letter of the first name, and then I wanted the last two letters of the last name, but there are white spaces at the end of the name. So I've had to do a whole bunch of stuff here to make this all work together. And uh, what's real common is I put this, this example out there, and then you can have some questions that look a little like this example. So inevitably what people do is they try to paste in this example and then change the names in it to make it work. And that gets them in all kinds of trouble. You really have to build this thing from scratch. So I'm going to walk you through building it from scratch so you can understand exactly what's happening. So let's take a look. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a select statement, because I always start with a select statement, right? And I need the first name. I need it from HSCUST. Because right, that's what it asked me to do. Take a look down here. I want to get the first letter of the first name. Here, we'll even try to highlight this here so we can make it a little more obvious. Oops. We get the first letter of the first name. I'm not going to worry about all this other stuff. The last two letters of the last name. So I definitely want to make sure both of those work. So let's see, can I get the first name? Select first from HSCUST. Yep, no problem. Can I get the last name? Select last from HSCUST. No problem. Those both work. So I can even do a select first name, last name. And those work just fine. All right, so we know we've got part of it working. So what else do we need to do to this thing? All right, well, the first thing I need to do is get the first letter of the first name. So let's build that next. Let's get rid of this last. Now, how can I get the first letter of the first name? All right, well, I know that there's a function called substring. So... substring first is the column I need. I want the first letter, starting at the first letter, and I only want one letter. All right, so let's make sure that works. Again, building these things piece by piece and making sure every part works as expected. Okay, and if I check, I'll find that those are, in fact, in all cases, the first letter of the first name. Now, if I saw anything weird in here, like numbers or spaces, then I know there's something weird about my data, and I may need to do more to get that letter out. But in this case, all my letters look right, so I know the first works. That's awesome. All right, what about last? Well, for the last, I want the last two letters of the last name. All right, well, that's certainly a little more complicated. So let's build that. And again, if I was really smart, I'd be taking notes on each of these as I built them, pasting them into Notepad++ or something like that, so that I could just go back and pick them up. All right, in this case, to get the last two letters, well, let's start here by just getting the last. Select last. Pardon me. And that's all groovy. But I can see here that they have different lengths. So to get the last two letters, I'm going to have to do a little extra work here because the last two letters in some of these cases are actually spaces. You know, this was probably defined as a varchar 15 or 20 or something, and none of these letters are that long. So I've got to get rid of those spaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really funky kind of thing here. I'm going to have to get all of these pieces out. So I can start with... Select last from HSCUS. And I know that I want to get those letters out. So how can I take the letters off the end and be confident? Well, I know there's a function called rtrim. Then 
Let's see what that does for me. All right. I don't see anything, but I feel pretty confident because I know that our trim works that I've just taken all of my spaces off the end. All right, so that's great. I've taken my spaces off. So what do I do now? Well, the question actually has me taking what? The last two letters of the last name. Well, how do I get that? Because I don't know where the last two are. I mean, Adams, the last two would be what? Spaces three and four. But uh, in Ferdinand, the last two would be space, what, 9 and 10, 8 and 9. So how do I get the different value? I mean, use that different value, but consistently take the last two of every one of them. Well, I don't know a way. But what I do know is the first letters are always the same. So what I can do is I can come in here and I can reverse this. And if I reverse it, then I'm going to make the first two actually be the last two. So watch this. So I'm going to take a reverse and take a look at what's happened in my brackets. I had this function, and now I've nested this function inside this function. Now our trim happens as part of the reverse function. And these brackets are super important. You see how there's a bracket bracket for this function. This function has a bracket bracket. And you could keep stacking functions, but you may have to make sure that your brackets always match. That's why we build this one step at a time. All right, let's see what happens now. Well, look at that. Everything is all nice and backwards. Perfect. And because I pulled the white space off, I can see that everything matches up really nicely over here. And just so you can see how white space works, I'm going to take out this R trim for a second. Watch what happens to my data now. It's a little funky because I got these white spaces. You probably can't see that, but I know what's happening. So let's put that R trim in there. Make sure we put last in the R trim bracket so they're nested. Double check just to make sure we got everything right. Now, with this, I can do some pretty cool stuff, right? Because now I can take the part off that I want. So let's take my, my reversed information. I'm going to take the first two letters, which would be S, M, S, L, so forth and so on, which are actually going to be the last two. So we're going to nest, nest another one. So I'm going to do substring. And I'm going to put all of those in brackets. Now look, again, look, R trim, it's a function, and it's in brackets there. It's what is happening. Reverse is a function inside, and see how it's got two brackets. And now substring. And you can see that it's got two brackets. So now everything inside of there is getting this substring. And I want to take the first two, starting at number one. All right, what did I do here? Okay. I've put it somewhere wrong here. Let's take a look. Select substring. There we go. All right, now let's see how that works. No, I still have a problem. Let's see, what else am I missing? Substring, I open it, I reverse it, I R trim it, last. Ah, there it is. All right, so remember my substring looks like this. Substring, some column, comma, where to start and how many to take. That's the way, that's the format. So substring, and remember everything inside these brackets here, up to the comma, is my sum column, 
then comma, then where I start and how many I want to take. And look at that. I've got the, the first two letters, which are actually the last two, but they're still backwards. Well, we've already learned we have a way to fix that. So now I can reverse the whole thing again. And remember, put the whole thing in brackets. And remember, this was a function, and this was a function, and this was a function, and they're now all inside the reverse function again. Remember, see, I said those brackets are super important. That's where so many people make their mistakes. If you try to just paste this thing in um, and then just try to change little bits and pieces, you're going to get into a mess because you're not going to know where your brackets really belong. So now I've got the last two of each one of those. No white spaces, nothing funny. Awesome. So what else did I need to do? So I needed to get the first letter of the first name and the last two the last name. All right, well, we've already tried the first part, right? So we said in the first part we were going to concat. Excuse me, we were just going to take first the first letter of the first name. So we're going to do substring. First. And we're going to start with the first letter and go one letter. All right. And then my next, so my first column is going to be this substring, which is the first letter of the first name, because this is the the data I'm pulling the first. Next one is going to be the last name, but I'm going to trim it, reverse it, trim it, reverse it, yada, yada, yada. Now I've got them all together. My first letter, my last letter. Now if I wanted to do interesting things with them, there are things I could do with that. For instance, I could put the whole thing in, con in a concat statement. Right, and then alias it. We talked about aliases in the alias video. As, let's just call it my column right now. And now I've got it all together. Just concatenated it. And if I wanted this to be prettier, there are other things I can do. Now look, remember with the concat, look how I put everything, that whole set of statements, two columns, all together is one thing now. And if I want to do stuff in between, I just put it at the comma. So I could uh, I could put a plus sign here with a space on each side. But that could be anything. I could put the word and. all kinds of stuff inside there. So that's the big key here. If I want to get things together, remember we talked about aliases. So when we put an alias in here, we had to make sure everything was inside that one concat statement. And as long as we're in that side, that concat statement, we can put stuff in between all we want. But make sure when you're nesting your functions, that you're paying really close attention to those brackets. And I strongly recommend you do just like me, build it up one piece at a time.